In terms of the history of the world, the Kardashev scale is a relatively new idea. Created as it was in the 1960s, in the decades since then, it's gone on to shape so much of how we view space, human civilization, and the search for alien life. But what about in the years, decades, centuries, and millennia before the 1960s? The bizarre thing is that in some cases, it appears as though ancient civilizations may have predicted the whole thing. Or perhaps they just knew about it long before Kardashev himself. This is Unveiled, and today we're exploring the Kardashev scale in Hindu cosmology. Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. Our regular viewers are by now well aware of the Kardashev scale, so we'll keep this brief. The Kardashev scale was devised by Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev in 1964 as a way to measure any and all civilizations, real-world groups, but also hypothetical groups that might exist in space. The scale ranks based on energy potential, with Type 1 capable of harvesting all the energy from its home planet, Type 2 capable of harvesting all the energy from its home star system, and with Type 3 its home galaxy. Higher levels have also been added to the original scale for theorized civilizations with the energy potential of the universe, the multiverse, and so on. Naturally, the further up the scale any civilization dares to go, the more advanced their society, technology, knowledge, pretty much everything about them gets. It's generally said that we humans rank around 0.7 on the scale. So we've got a long way to go still before completing it. But what's curious is that our ancestors of the distant past may have known all this long before we were even born. If we travel back in time just a few hundred years, we have various records to draw upon regarding the often successful future predictions made by those alive then. The Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci gives us some of perhaps the most famous apparent foretellings what with his detailed diagrams of helicopters and other machines that were far ahead of their time. If we travel thousands of years back, the trail gets increasingly difficult to follow, but there are still stories, superstitions, and legends passed down that seemingly show past groups contemplating concepts like or very close to the Kardashev scale, far, far earlier than when the modern world finally worked it out. According to some interpretations of ancient Hindu scripture, there's mention of flying machines, of the importance of stars, the potential for immortality, and even of time travel. The Vimana frequently appear in epic Sanskrit poems as flying chariots or sometimes as flying temples. They've before been described as early predictions of today's jumbo jets. But while some of our planes perhaps can rival a temple in terms of size, arguably the Vimana hint at something even more advanced. Generation ships could well feature in a Kardashev Type II civilization or higher, so could the Vimana actually be an early version of that? By all accounts, these legendary machines link Earth to the heavens. And that's perhaps not so far away from what humankind is trying to achieve with space travel. A Dyson sphere is a key structure in Kardashev models too. A massive frame built around a star, siphoning all the energy from that star so that it can be redistributed as efficiently as possible around a civilization. We've yet to find one in the modern day, of course, but might there have been hints towards one again in earlier texts? Certainly stars were seen as incredibly important, and the legendary Hindu figures known as the Ribus are sometimes depicted as being stars. There are three of them altogether, and they're often described as artisans. They were gifted creators, impressing the gods with their miraculous inventions and abilities, including, again, the creation of flying machines. But the Ribus were also famed for restoring youth to their parents. In today's world, we're still dreaming of a way to stop the clock on aging, and any civilization that managed to do so would instantly rocket up on the Kardashev scale. But these are hardly new ideas, with the quest for immortality being handled by star-fueled master creators in ancient legend, too. In Soma, the myths of the past perhaps include a substance of the future as well. Soma appears in some of the earliest Hindu texts available as a mystical potion made of an unknown ingredient but it gifts whoever drinks it with divine power and knowledge. The exact effects of Soma differ between retellings, but it's generally thought of as an elixir of life. Soma grants the drinker with immortality, increased strength, pure thoughts, all the things that a perfect being might require. Not every interpretation of the Kardashev scale includes living forever as a feature for higher beings, but many do. Sometimes the Kardashev way of doing things includes a more digital, clinical mind upload so that our consciousness survives on a server of some kind. But climbing the Kardashev scale also means mastering the natural world. Soma is usually thought of as a plant first and foremost, 
and the debate continues as to what that plant could be. But seen against the backdrop of a Kardashev future, perhaps we'll only reach a higher level once we've discovered something as vital as Soma. In the Aldous Huxley dystopian novel Brave New World, Soma is the name given to a drug that ultimately causes some pretty major problems. But were a civilization to better plot their way through the Kardashev scale, then something akin to Soma could be the key to their success. Finally, if flying machines, star power, and immortality don't quite hook you in, the ancient texts seemingly cover time travel, too. It might feel as though time travel should be the brainchild of contemporary society, particularly as the writer H.G. Wells is generally credited with bringing it to the mainstream around about the turn of the 20th century. But actually, these are ideas that have been around for much longer. Broadly, some crucial themes in Hindu legend have to do with time, as the differentiation between the material and spiritual realms play a vital part. Time moves differently for the gods than it does for mere mortals on Earth, too, with the highest powers experiencing whole cycles of hundreds of thousands of years, all while we eke out just a few decades in our lives on the ground. The best-known example of time travel in Hindu scripture, though, is the legend of King Kakudmi and his daughter Revati. It's said that Kakudmi sought help from creator god Brahma in finding a husband for his daughter, who he deemed too beautiful and talented for anyone on Earth. So the father and daughter went to Brahma on a higher level of existence and spent some time with him. However, as they ascended to a higher plane to do so, it was soon revealed to them that everything back on Earth had aged by thousands of years in their seemingly brief absence. They had spent what felt like only a few moments with Brahma, but back home the world had changed beyond all recognition. Strictly speaking, this appears to be more of an example of time dilation, an Einsteinian concept. But still, it arguably shows that the flow of time was well understood even thousands of years ago. Again, while access to time travel isn't an essential component on the Kardashev scale, it's widely thought that advanced enough civilizations will have mastered it. And so it's perhaps little wonder that when we get to the highest levels, type 3, 4, 5, and more, the theorized members of these Kardashev groups are so often compared to gods, because their powers would be almost divine in nature. However, there's one last kicker to the legend of Kakudmi and Revati, revealed upon their return to Earth, which, remember, is now thousands of years older than when they left it. In the intervening time, human civilization is said to have regressed, gotten worse, not better, so that people are less capable and less knowledgeable than they once were. If something like the Kardashev scale does exist in ancient stories, then, perhaps the message is that it'll never be completed either by us or on this planet. In Hinduism, there are cycles to life, the universe, and everything, which does offer hope even in the worst of times. But the Kardashev scale isn't quite so flexible. On the scale, we go ever onward, seeking to beat our last achievements, improve on previous lifetimes, and stride into the future with more and more power. We get to type 1, we aim for type 2, and then it's on to type 3, and so on. But whenever the technologies required seemingly appear in ancient legend, the message isn't always so clear. The Vimana are flying machines, but they're also genuine temples. The Ribus arguably hint toward harvesting energy from stars, but immortality is still seen as more of a divine gift than a feasible breakthrough. The exact composition of Soma is still unknown, and time travel happens, but it takes a visit to the gods to make it happen. Still, it's perhaps a little spooky how often millennia-old stories mimic the kinds of technology that we're hoping to see sometime in the future. And that's the Kardashev scale in Hindu cosmology. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.